Hello students! Welcome back to my channel! So for today, our topic is all about the rates of reactions. Noong mga nakaraang mga discussion, kung nanonood kayo ng aking mga video lesson, napag-aralan na po natin ang chemical reactions. So na-discuss ko doon kung paano malalaman kung ang isang reaction ay chemical reaction. Na-discuss ko rin kung paano mag-balance ng isang chemical reaction and how to apply the law of conservation of mass in these types of reactions. So for today, we will be discussing rates of reactions and what are the factors affecting the rates of reactions. But first, alamin muna natin, ano nga ba yung rates of reactions? A rate of reaction is the speed of a reaction. Some chemical reactions are very fast while some are very slow. For example, kapag merong mga explosions, these are considered as very fast reactions. Kaparehas din sila ng mga nasusunog. These are fast reactions. However, there are also reactions that can be considered slow, just like rusting. Yung pagkalawang ng isang bakal, hindi yan nangyayari overnight. It takes a lot of time. Now, the next question is, Why are some reactions faster than others? Bakit mabagal mga lawang ang bakal, pero bakit kapag nasusunog ang papel, napakabilis? It has something to do with what is happening in the microscopic level. Pag sinabi natin microscopic level, ito yung mga atoms or molecules na nasa loob ng matter, whether it's solid, liquid, or Gas. Reactions take place when particles collide with a certain amount of energy. So nakikita po natin dito, nag-highlight ako ng dalawang set of terms. First is collide and second is certain amount of energy because these are very important requisites before a reaction can happen. The minimum amount of energy needed for the particles to react is called activation energy. So dahil sinabi natin na minimum, ibig sabihin kailangan maabot or ma-reach yung activation energy na yan bago magkaroon ng reaction in between particles. Ngayon, kapag halimbawa hindi naabot yung activation energy na yan, magkokolide lang yung dalawang particle pero walang reaction na mangyayari. So ano ba itong collision theory na to? The collision theory is a way in which scientists explain how particles react. According to collision theory, particles are described as spheres. So iisipin natin na yung mga particles, atoms, and molecules, they are spheres. And how fast they move depends on how much energy they have. Okay? So according to this theory, not all collisions between the molecules result in the formation of products. Ito na yung kaninang hinighlight po natin nung nakaraang slide. Effective collisions only occur when, number one, colliding molecules possess a minimum kinetic energy, which is the activation energy, and there must be a correct orientation when they collide. So here I'm showing you a simulation of collisions in the microscopic level. Okay, this simulation was made by FET, which is the University of Colorado. Ito yung kanilang website. So dito makakita kayo na napakaraming simulations ng science and mathematics. So going back, so on your screen, you can see a small chamber wherein we will be trying to simulate the collisions among particles. So for example, single collision, meron tayong molecule and then here we have another particle or an atom in this case. So ang gagawin natin, ihilahin natin to, straight shot muna tayo. And then makikita natin na 
at that particular direction, straight shot, natamaan niya yung molecule. However, if we do it at a different angle, slightly different angle, okay, may kita natin na pwedeng maka-apekto yung direction ng pagtama nila doon sa Reaction. So, may kita natin dito na dahil nga kakaiba yung direction na sinut natin yung yellow molecule doon sa ating atom, ang tagal niyang magkaroon ng reaction compared dun sa una natin na ginawa na straight shot lang. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng second statement natin dito na the reactant molecules should be in correct orientation when they collide. You have to satisfy both conditions in order for the collision to be considered effective. And kapag effective ang collision, magkakaroon ng reaction. Sabi nga natin sa example natin kanina, pwedeng magkaroon ng collision pero walang reaction. Just like kapag hindi naabot yung minimum energy na tinatawag natin na activation energy. Now, let's go to the factors affecting the rate of reaction. In your module, there are four factors that were discussed. So, I will be discussing them one by one. First, we have temperature. Second, we have surface area of reactants. Third, concentration of the reactants. And fourth, the presence of a catalyst. Let's start with temperature. I saw a picture from another PowerPoint that I saw online and this perfectly explains how temperature affects the rate of reaction. So on the left side, you have the low temperature or cold. On the right side, you have the high temperature or hot. So here, it's very obvious that the higher the temperature, the faster the rate of reaction. Kaya nga kung gusto nating matunaw yung isang ingredient sa isang liquid, ang ginagawa natin, iniinit natin para matunaw siya agad. Because temperature helps in increasing the rate of reaction. If we try to look at temperature here in our simulation, yun tayo sa many collisions. Okay, kunwari meron pang pagbomba. So, makikita natin na ito yung normal na movement niya given in our simulation. However, if we increase the temperature, this is the knob for increasing and decreasing the temperature. Pag tinaasan natin, look at what happens. Okay, the movement becomes faster because why? Temperature is the average kinetic energy of all the molecules. So, mas mataas ang temperature, mas mabilis ang movement. Kapag naman binabaan natin ang temperature, the opposite happens. Kaya lang it will take some time before it slows down. Kasi hindi naman instant yung pagtaas at pagbaba ng temperature, right? So, it will still take some time. Next, the surface area of the reactants. So, what do we mean when we say surface area? I hope you are already familiar with this term kasi this is being discussed in mathematics. Here I have a picture showing the difference between a low surface area and high surface area. So if we try to relate this to an example, 
pwede nating gamitin yung salt. So, may mga salt na malalaki yung particles. We call that rock salt. And meron tayo mga salt na maliliit yung particles. Just like iodized salt. So, if we compare the two, rock salt would have low surface area while iodized salt would have high surface area. So, paano ba nakaka-apekto itong surface area sa rate of reaction? The smaller the pieces, the larger the surface area. This means more collisions and more chances of reactions. Ibig sabihin, mas mabilis ang reaction kapag mas maliliit ang particles. Okay, so parang sa kahoy, kapag meron kang isang malaking log or isang malaking piraso ng kahoy, ang gagawin mo para mabilis siyang magdingas ay puputul-putulin mo. Iti-chop mo pa yung kahoy. Same dun sa mga uling. Mahirap padingasin ang uling na malalaki ang mga particles. Dapat maliliit siya. Because it has something to do with, again, surface area. The next factor is concentration. In this visual, you can see that it is obvious that low concentration would mean few collisions while higher concentration would mean more collisions. So if ever that in a substance there is higher concentration, it means that there are more particles in the same amount of space. And therefore, kapag mas crowded yung space na yun, there is more chance to collide with one another. For example, if we go to our simulation, here we can see that the particles are moving inside the container. Confined sila dyan. Onti lang sila, nasa less than 15 particles kasi nagsisimulate lang naman tayo. And there are chances that they collide with each other. Now, what happens if we add more particles? So, this time, gagamitin ko ibang particles naman para makita natin yung difference sa color. So, ang idadagdag ko yung molecule na may letter B and letter C. So, dito makikita natin na dahil mas crowded yung space natin, mas maraming beses na nagkakaroon ng collisions yung mga particles. What more if we increase the temperature? So, if we increase the temperature, mas lalong gagalaw ang mga yan ng mabilis and magkakaroon ng mas maraming reaction. So, paano ba natin malalaman dito sa ating simulation kung merong reaction? Kung mapapansin nyo kanina, yellow lang yung ating ginamit. Pero ngayon, nagdagdag tayo ng molecule na merong purple and blue. Now, if we pause this, okay, may kita natin dito na meron na tayong particles na nagkaroon na ng reaction. Halimbawa ito, nagdikit na si yellow at saka si purple. Okay, pero syempre, hindi pa lahat kasi nga, kailangan pa ng maraming collisions bago magkaroon ng reaction dun sa lahat ng mga Molecules and atoms na yan. Again, at a higher concentration, there are more particles in the same amount of space. So, therefore, there will be more collisions and there will be higher probability of reaction. So, yung last natin na factor affecting the rate of reaction is the presence of a catalyst. Now, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a substance that changed the rate of reaction without being used up in the reaction. So, the catalyst is not a reactant. Pinapabilis lang niya yung reaction. Also, please take note that 
catalysts never produce more products. The same amount of products are produced, mas mabilis lang. Sa katawan natin, yung mga catalyst na yan, ang tawag dyan, enzymes. I think I have already mentioned this to you in our previous discussions during the third quarter. So, ano ba yung kahalagahan ng mga catalyst? So, usually, yung catalysts, yung kanilang gamit ay sa industry. So, one importance is that products can be made more easily kasi nga pinapabilis nga nila yung rate of reaction. So, therefore, time and money are saved. And then, catalysts also reduce the need for higher temperatures, therefore, saving fuel and reducing pollution. So, punta tayo sa examples ng catalysts. First is nickel. So, nickel is used as a catalyst in production of margarine, specifically in the hydrogenation of vegetable oils. Another example of a catalyst is iron, which is used in the production of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. So, once again, let's go back to the four factors affecting the rate of reaction. First, temperature, second, surface area, third, concentration, and fourth, presence of a catalyst. So that's all for today, students. I hope you have learned something from my video. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to comment them down below. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for watching my video lessons. This is the last lesson for the fourth quarter of grade 10 science. So I hope you can still encourage your friends or your younger siblings to watch my videos just in case they reach grade 10 in the future. So again, thank you very much for watching my videos and see you next time. Bye!